For the first few years in this business, I really struggled with finding my style. Um, people would ask me and I would say things like, I don't know, or I just love to tattoo, so I do a little bit of everything, or I haven't chosen my style yet because I just started. And to me, um, anything before four years is still a beginner because you haven't reached that like 10,000 hours to become an expert point. But it's really hard to stand out in this business if uh, you don't do something very specific because people don't know what to recommend you for and you don't know how to find your target audience. So I made a commitment that I would choose a style by my fourth year. Then I started getting really stressed out and worried about finding my style for the like for the last three three years. Um, I used to love Instagram and then I started to hate it. I got really frustrated with clients bringing me other people's work and wanting me to replicate it. Um, I don't want to replicate somebody else's personality. But if you don't speak for yourself, someone else will speak for you. So I decided that I was going to leave everything familiar and start traveling in order to escape the noise and the sea of opinions. And I didn't even really like my own flash anymore at this point. I knew I hadn't developed a distinct style, but I also knew that all my work had a sort of theme. It was all related to the occult. And that's probably because I read tarot cards for maybe seven years. And um, so in this video, I'm showing you how I design one piece start to finish, and it's the goddess Aphrodite. So with any project, uh, you gotta start off with research. So look up artists that I like, um, images of the thing that I'm trying to tattoo or draw, and then I'll do some sketches in my notebook. I have a love-hate relationship with old school tattoos. Um, there's a certain geometry to them that makes them both attractive and ugly, and so I always start on graph paper. When I was tattooing at Good Soul in Birmingham, UK, Daz, the owner of the shop, gave me some advice about finding my style. He asked me, what makes a good tattoo to you? And that was the advice he had gotten from one of his mentors or um, tattoo idols. My favorite artist in Toronto is Tammy Kim, because I can spot her artwork a mile away. It's just so distinctly her, and that's what I wanted for my artwork. So even though I had been drawing realistically for years and went to art school and then went to another art school and then went to art classes, I knew I wasn't gonna get that um, recognition or that uniqueness by doing realistic tattoos. And I was gonna have to compete with every other realism tattoo artist out there. The problem is when you look at a realistic tattoo, you don't really know who the artist is unless you recognize the original which would be a photograph. After I have my first sketch down on graph paper, I use translucent vellum and redraw it, and that way I can flip things, see what things look like, collage them without actually drawing. I eventually went to France and I avoided social media. I found that I was drawing things that were influenced by artists that I loved in high school, such as Audrey Kawasaki. Here I'm putting in the straight eyelashes that you find on old school gypsy girls. So in this whole process, I probably do the drawing maybe three or four times. First in the sketchbook, then on the vellum, then I outline it, so that's three times. And then I color it in. I actually color on the back of the drawing because that way it's a little bit faded on the front and I, that to me kind of represents how the tattoo will heal. So the front of the drawing is the black outline, um, all the highlights and any details I would have to do in color with the lining machine. The interesting thing is that all my previous flash work had all the telltale signs and characteristics of my new style. It just never came together in a way that made me happy before or in a way that I felt was really cohesive. 